Hello again, Nitro and welcome to another video. And this one's going to be another video game um, thoughts uh, video, so it is. Uh, but before I start, I just want to say I hope you all had a great week and um, and I hope you all enjoyed yourself for whatever you were all up to. Um, so I hope it went, went uh, pretty good for you. Uh, mine was okay, so it was just pretty much spent time with family and that was it, really. Uh, played a few video games and that's it, really. Um... So yeah, this one is going to be um, my thoughts about region coding or region locking, uh, depending on what you call it. And I just want to share my thoughts about it and stuff. And um, the reason that made me, the reason you know I wanted to do this video was because of the fact I was actually talking to one of my subscribers, and he's a great YouTuber. Uh, called 13 YouCube and um, he was talking about like video games and stuff and I was mentioning about re region coding and stuff um, um, when he was live streaming and um, he was saying yeah I was telling him that I absolutely hate it so I don't like region coding he was saying he, he would say the same thing and it sort of made me want, wonder about wanted to uh, make uh, like a thoughts opinion uh, opinion video about it so here you go and I hope, hope you look forward to it so yeah, um, the thing with region coding um, is that, uh, depending on what you call it, uh, there's usually two terms. There's region free and there's region lock. So there is. Or region locked. Now the thing with region free is that, uh, depending on what the device is, um, the thing that actually makes it region free is usually um, uh, the, the co like code in the system that makes it able to read, um, depending on what media it is, from different regions. So, for example, you know, the PlayStation 3, the Sony PS3. Um, the thing with the PS3 was, with the games, because uh, obviously they, were played on, they played on BD ROMs, um, they were actually region free. So, for example, if you lived in the UK or Europe or whatever, and you wanted to import games from America or Japan, um, you could do that and play them on the PlayStation 3 with no issue. But the problem with it is um, for extra content. So, for example, if you bought a game from America and it had DLC on it, you wouldn't be able to access that content on your European or British um, PSN account because it's not connected um, um, the same way. Um, you would only be able to use that content if you were using an American PSN account, which sort of, you know, makes it a bit of a problem. But um, you can create, you know, account from a different region, which is, an, which is and people might, might think is a bit of a hassle, but at least you still got the option, so you have. Whereas the Xbox 360 and the Nintendo Wii didn't have any region, um, did have region coding. And uh, the strange thing about it is that there's actually some Xbox 360 games that are actually region free and they work on any 360 model uh, but the majority of the games are fully region locked so for example if you live in America and you want to import a game from Japan you couldn't just put the disc in and have it work uh, you couldn't even play it so basically what you have to do is either you know basically a lot of people would have to uh, import an Xbox 360 from Japan or Europe, depending on what the game is, just to play the game, which is a bit of an issue. And same with the Wii, that was fully region locked as well. And then we get to the next generation of the home consoles, uh, Wii U, PS4 and Xbox One. Um, I could also include, you know, Xbox One S, uh, PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, so I could. Um, which are the same stuff, obviously, they're just mid-generation upgrades, but still. Um, the thing with the PS4 and the Xbox One, and all their other models, is that they are fully region free. So, for example, if you own an original PlayStation 4, um, PlayStation 4 Slim or PS4 Pro, all PlayStation 4 games will work on it, depending on which region you are in. It's fully region free, which is a good thing. And same for the Xbox One, uh, including the Xbox One S and the Xbox One X. All Xbox One games from any region will fully work on it, which is good, so it does. The problem with that generation is the Wii U. The Wii U is not region free. It's actually region locked. And that actually really annoyed me, I remember, with the Wii U because there were so many games from different regions that you'd love to play, but you just cannot import it. So half the time I thought, do you know what? I'll just leave it. You know what I mean? There's no point doing that because it's going to cost money 
to import a Wii U from America or, or Japan just to play these games. And then I've also got to think about, uh, you know, the vaults conversion, you know, of, of the power. Uh, and I'd have to buy a transformer for it, you know what I mean? Um, and it would just, it would, the money would just be counting up, you know what I mean? And um, it, so, but most of the time I just left it and stuff. But one thing I'm quite happy with Nintendo is that their new, you know, generation console, the Switch, is fully region free. So I'm glad they've got rid of that region coding, which is really, really good. It's about time, Nintendo, for your home consoles, you know what I mean? You've, you've, you did it for a long time for your handhelds. You know, from the get from the original Game Boy to the DS Lite, they were all region free. But after that, they were all region coded. So the DSi, the DSi XL, um, the 3DS, the 3DS XL, the 2DS, um, the uh, new 3DS, the new 3DS XL, and the new 2DS XL. Um, yeah, it's a long, long list and stuff. Now the thing is with the um the 3ds all 3ds models is that um the backwards compatibility of ds games are actually region free so they are um there are a lot of ds games that will import ds games that work on any 3ds there are a bunch that just do not work because of the fact they are um the, because of the fact of the way they are coded um because of the ds there's like a bunch of letters on the front of a ds uh, game card and obviously, depending on what the letters are, it will be region free or it won't work on it. So yeah, um, so that's just the way it goes and stuff. And we've even got like different types of um, you know media, such as like films and stuff, because uh, you know um, over time, you know, you know, video um, or film media, if I say, um, has mostly been region locked. So it has. Uh, like a lot of the tape stuff, you know, VHS and I think even Betamax might be in region locked. Um, and basically, <clears throat> the way that would work, because I remember my mum telling me this a couple of years ago, where she had a friend who uh, sent her a, uh, like a video tape, a v VHS tape over from America, and she couldn't just put the the tape into a, a UK PAL um, VHS player. So what she'd have to do... It should have, is that she had to go to a special um, video store to change the conversion from NTSC, which is what America and even Japan use, uh, to PAL, P-A-L, um, which is what the UK, us, and, um, the, and Europe use. And once that was done, once the conversion were done, she was able to properly use the and watch the VHS tape. Um... And then, you know, we get to disc media and stuff with, like, CDs, which are fully region-free, which is a good thing. Um, DVDs are not, and Blu-rays are not either. Um, I don't know if 4K Blu-rays are region-free. I'm not entirely sure, because I don't own one, and I don't own a 4K television. Um, it may be, but I'm not entirely sure. But one format that's actually interesting to know that's actually region-free is the format that lost against Blu-ray back in 2008. HD DVD. HD DVD was region free. Sorry, it was. Um, which is pretty cool, you know what I mean? It's a shame that it didn't win on that feature, but yeah, if you had an HD DVD player, whether or not, whether, whether or not it was the standard HD DVD players or the Xbox 360 HD DVD player add on, any HD DVD from America, Japan, Europe, um, any region, Australia, China, anywhere. You could import an HD DVD and it would play fine on your HD DVD player. Because I've actually got a copy of 300. I've got two copies. One is a UK PAL copy and one is an American NTSC copy. And they both work fine on it. You know what I mean? Uh, well, obviously the PAL version will work, but the American copy 300 will work fine. So it does. So which is pretty cool, you know what I mean? It's, it's pretty nice that, so it is. Um... But the, the one platform that really, really annoyed me, um, well, two, I could say, with region uh, coding was both the Wii and the Wii U. Now, the thing about it is that there's a lot of great games on that on those two consoles that when, that had games not released in every single region. So the two games for the Wii I wanted to play so badly were um, Excitebox, Excitebox Extreme Racing and Kirby Dream Collection. Now, the thing about it was that these two games, when they came out, um, Excitebox came out in 2009, 
and uh, Kirby Dream Collection came out in 2012. And with Excitebots, I remember when I used to watch, when I started watching game videos, um, video game reviews and stuff and videos online and on YouTube. I remember I used to watch a channel called uh, We Folder Josh. Uh, Josh Thomas is called. Uh, it's called uh, Nintendo Beyond. Um, I don't really watch his stuff now, but I used to watch a lot of it back then. And I remember he was talking about this one game called uh, Excitebots Extreme Racing coming out for the Wii. And it came out in August 2009 for America. And he actually said in that video that there's no release date for Japan or Europe, but there could be in the future. So I remember wanting that game so badly because it looked really, really good. And what ended up happening was uh, the rest of 2009 came, nothing. 2010 came, nothing. 2011, nothing came. And around this time, I, I actually quite forgot about it until like 2013. And I found out it got, actually got released in Japan in 2011. So it did. But it actually got released in Japan through Club Nintendo. That was the only way you could ever get it. And I kept thinking, I thought, well, when is the UK and Europe getting this game? Because it looks bloody great. And unfortunately, we did not get the game. For some reason, we did not get it. And uh, Australia almost had a chance of actually getting it. Um, and basically, uh, the Australian, when it was being released, uh, planned to be released in Australia, the game got cancelled. So it did. And what ended up happening was it was actually down to Nintendo of Australia. And the reason why it got cancelled was because of the fact that they said there wasn't a lot of interest with the game. Even though a lot of people wanted to play the game. Like, I'd love to play that game, but officially, I'd have to import a Wii from America or whatever. But another way is that you'd have to hack and modify that bloody Nintendo Wii of yours to actually play those games. And it's it might sound like a bad thing to do, because I'm not really into doing that sort of stuff. But if I wanted to play that game badly... I would hack, you know, and modify, region mod, a Nintendo Wii. Like, I've actually got a spare one, so I have, um, just to play that game, because it looks really, really good. Or play it through an, a Wii emulator on a PC, whatever. You know what I mean? And it's just a bloody nuisance like that, so it is. Uh, and another game I wanted to play was um, Kirby Dream Collection for the Wii. And, again, that didn't get released in Europe as well, and I was so excited. And I remember... I was. I remember thinking back then, I thought, do you know what? I'm ready to put my money down because I want to play this goddamn game. Because it looks really, really good because it's a collection of games. Still wasn't released. And the UK and Europe uh, were quite quiet about release dates. And unfortunately, nothing ever happened. There were like, I think people asking whether or not to release it on the Wii U. That didn't happen. Um, but I remember when Wii games, digital Wii games were being released for the Wii U eShop. And I kept thinking, I thought, imagine if the Kirby Dream Collection got released on there. It didn't. Uh, but Excitebots got a re-release. And again, we didn't get it either. You know what I mean? I thought, you flipping egg. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, a, you know, ridiculous, you know, the way it goes. And it's like with a lot of digital games. Because I know there's some games on, like, eShop that get released in America. Or Japan, like, years later, you know, years before. And it takes ages for us to get them. It's a bloody nuisance. It really, really is. And I hate that. I really, really do. But I'm glad that now that Nintendo's mostly moved on the Switch. But this is why we, a lot of the old stuff, people use emulation just to play the goddamn thing. And I don't blame people for, for doing that. I really, really don't. Because at least they, they, they're getting to play it, you know what I mean? So yeah, um, overall, I'm not a fan of region code. And I think it's the worst thing ever that's made. Um, and it, it hurts a lot of people, especially when they, when they want to play games and stuff. But there's not what we can do about it. But luckily... For the main consoles, they fully dropped it, except for the 3DS. So I didn't mean, didn't mean to spit them, sorry. Uh, except for the 3DS, and I I'm not sure if the Vita, I'm not sure if the Vita is uh, region free. I don't know. But um, overall, I just want to say, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, my next video will be on Friday with Alex. Wonder how the heck he's going to be acting, he's probably still happy after the Atari stuff. And obviously, I'm still making my regular video on Saturday. So I just want to say, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I'll see you all later. Oh, sorry. Enjoy the rest of your, enjoy, enjoy the rest of your week. Sorry. <laughs> enjoy the rest of your week. See you later. Bye.